Okay, let's unpack this. We've got this uh, very tight 11-day window we need to talk about. Right, November 22nd through December 2nd, 2025. And it's hitting Europe, Western Russia, and the Caucasus. This is not a normal seasonal shift we're looking at. The models are flagging a, well, a multi-hazard event. And what's so fascinating here mm -hmm. is the structural cause. Mm -hmm. The sources point to this very stable atmospheric setup that's acting like a, a continuous massive funnel. A funnel. Yeah, they call it the North Atlantic Dipole Configuration or NAD. It's persistent and it's basically creating this incredibly efficient storm track. So what's being funneled through it? Atlantic maritime air. Yeah. So, you know, immense amounts of moisture. All that humid air is being pushed directly into a rapidly deepening pool of continental cold air. So is this just shaping up to be a classic heavy snowstorm? Well, not just snow. Yeah. And that's because of the mechanism that's driving this funnel. Okay. This NAD setup, it's really the regional signature of a predicted negative North Atlantic oscillation phase, the negative NAO. Which means the jet stream shifts. It shifts south a lot further south. And that's the key because it just opens the door for these Arctic air outbreaks to spill directly into the mid latitudes. Right, where all that moisture is being dumped. Precisely. But the sources seem to really focus on this one critical detail, the thermodynamic threshold. They're talking about temperatures hovering right rear freezing. So what, zero down to minus five Celsius? Yeah. Why is that narrow range the most destructive? Because that is the absolute sweet spot for maximum damage that specific range maximizes the risk of first that high density heavy wet snow yeah the kind that brings down trees and power lines okay and crucially it's the perfect temperature for catastrophic freezing rain and just rapid ice accretion yeah I mean, sustained freezing rain is arguably the single most damaging weather event for our modern infrastructure i mean no the climate is sort of turning the volume up on all of this. Absolutely. The closest clap you're on relation is in full effect here. A warmer atmosphere just holds far more moisture. So the system is carrying a heavier load to begin with. A much heavier load. So when these systems hit that freezing point, the precipitation, whether it falls as snow or ice, is just inherently more intense. So if freezing does happen. The ice buildup will be rapid and widespread. It really raises the question of whether, you know, typical city salt storage and de-icing equipment is even adequate for this kind of ice load. So let's look at the regional impacts. Central Europe and Western Russia, the sources flag them as risk zones, B and C. They're facing the highest probability of these uh, crippling ice storms, right? Correct. Their infrastructure is mostly built for dry cold or you know, stable snow. But this projected increase in precipitation falling as ice is a whole different problem. It's a huge, fast-moving threat to assets like power grids and pipelines. Because the ice loading is so quick. So quick. Assets can fail faster than crews can even get out there. Is the whole area facing the same risk then? What about further southeast, like the Caucasus, Zone D, with all that rugged terrain? That's where the risk shifts. It goes from ice to water. In the Caucasus, that climate-amplified heavy rainfall just hits steep, already saturated ground. Which means landslides. Damaging landslides and mudslides. And this isn't just a local issue either. This kind of event can threaten essential transnational infrastructure. The sources specifically cite arteries like the Georgian military road. Which is critical for regional trade. And energy flow. Yeah. And there's this crucial timing problem that could make the impact so much worse. Yes. The overall seasonal forecast, you know, for December through February is actually for milder and wetter conditions. So everyone is expecting a mild winter. They could be. This intense 11 day spike of ice and cold is highly anomalous. So if resource mobilization, you know, utility crews, de-icing chemicals is delayed because municipalities are planning for a mild start to the season. Then the societal and economic impact from this short, severe event is just maximized. So this deep dive really confirms the, I guess, the increasing volatility of winters in Europe. It's not just about warmer averages anymore. It's about these intense short duration extremes. It requires a whole new level of preparedness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we connect the sheer atmospheric instability to the bigger picture, it raises another important point about future risks. Oh. It's outside this core warning period, but climate modeling projects that Europe may actually see less frequent severe hail overall. Fewer hailstorms, but... But the frequency of the very largest, most destructive hailstones, we're talking over five centimeters in diameter, that's projected to increase. The damage from hail isn't linear. 
A small increase in size can cause a massive increase in insured losses. So it demands a critical recalculation of risk. It really does. Something for you to consider as you think about, well, a much more volatile future.